In this video, we'll look at how to measure the titratable acidity of your wine or juice. You'll need the following. A burette with a burette stand and a white tile, a pipette filler and 10 mil pipette, bromothymol blue, sodium hydroxide at 0.1 molar concentration, a funnel, distilled water, a beaker, and a conical flask. Start by filling your burette with sodium hydroxide. To do this, lower the burette onto a stool, or even onto the floor if you prefer, placing the funnel in the top. Remember to turn the stopcock to off before putting any sodium hydroxide into the burette. Proceed by adding a small amount of sodium hydroxide to the funnel. The reason we lower the burette onto a stool or onto the floor is to avoid pouring the corrosive substance over our heads. With a small beaker placed under the burette, open the stopcock and allow the small amount of reagent to drain out. This cleans the burette and ensures that it is not contaminated. Close the stopcock again and fill the burette just above the zero milliliter mark. Remove the funnel, then carefully open the stopcock and drain the burette so that it reads exactly zero milliliters. Remember that when taking readings such as this, read from the bottom of the meniscus. If you drain it slightly too much, that's not a problem, just make a note of it. Now that your burette's ready to go, we need to add 10 milliliters of our sample to a conical flask. To do this, take your volumetric pipette and insert it into the pipette filler. Place the tip of the pipette into your beaker and start to draw the solution into the pipette. To use the pipette filler, simply scroll the wheel downwards using your thumb, avoiding pressing the button below the wheel. The marking on the pipette towards the top indicates the 10 milliliter fill line. Draw your sample past this point and then remove the pipette filler and place your thumb over the top immediately using firm pressure. You can then control the release of the sample from the pipette to bring the level down to the 10 milliliter mark. Again, read from the bottom of the meniscus. Dispense your sample into the conical flask by simply allowing the pipette to drain into it. You'll notice that a very small amount of the sample will remain in the pipette. This is perfectly normal. Next, we add some distilled water to the sample. It doesn't matter how much you add here, because the amount of acid in the conical flask remains the same. It's simply done just to make the colour change easier to see. Now add two to three drops of bromothymol blue. It should turn yellow as soon as it hits the sample. And give it a swirl to mix it in. We're now ready to start the titration, so place the conical flask under the burette and open the stopcock. Control the addition of sodium hydroxide with your left hand while swirling the container with your right hand. It's extremely important to continuously mix the solution as you add the sodium hydroxide. On your first run, it's unlikely that you know exactly how much sodium hydroxide to add to your sample to neutralize it. So therefore it's important to go slowly as you don't want to overshoot. As you approach the neutralization point, you'll see the solution start to change color. At this point, add the sodium hydroxide dropwise. Once you see a blue-green color, stop the trituration and take your reading. 
For reference, these conical flasks show different stages of the endpoint. On the left, we see pH 6.5. As you can see, it's a more yellow color still. In the middle, we have pH 7, which would be the perfect point to stop the titration. On the right, we have pH 7.5, which would indicate that you've added too much sodium hydroxide to the solution. To calculate the TA of your sample, simply times the amount of sodium hydroxide you've used, known as your titer, by 0.75. So in our example, where we had a titer of 8.5 millilitres, we got a TA of 6.4 grams per litre.